Have you ever pondered over the biblical perspective on cheating? As we navigate through life's complexities, we often find ourselves seeking guidance, and what better source than the sacred scriptures themselves? Today, we're going to dive deep into this critical topic exploring what the Bible truly says about infidelity, does it provide a clear stance and what are the consequences if any, let's delve into the sacred scriptures and uncover what they have to say about infidelity. The Bible outlines clear precepts on marital fidelity. When we delve into the Holy Scriptures, we find that it presents a straightforward definition of cheating within the confines of marriage. The Ten Commandments, foundational to both Judaism and Christianity, are emphatic on this matter. Particularly, the Seventh Commandment is unequivocal, you shall not commit adultery. In the biblical context, adultery refers to a married person engaging in sexual relations with someone other than their spouse. This is clearly an act of betrayal, a breaking of the sacred marital bond, a bond that is meant to be exclusive and lifelong. The Bible considers this act as cheating, as a violation not just against one's spouse, but also against God, who is the author of marriage. To further understand this, let's delve into the original Hebrew text. The word for adultery in Hebrew is naf which literally means to commit unfaithful acts, particularly in regard to the marital covenant. This definition underscores the gravity of such an act. It's not just a breach of trust or a failure in commitment, it's a direct affront to the covenant, the sacred agreement between two people before God. But it's important to note that the Bible's definition of cheating extends beyond the physical act of adultery. Jesus in the New Testament expands on this in the Sermon on the Mount. He says that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This suggests that even lustful thoughts can be considered as cheating according to the Bible. So what we see is that the Bible's definition of cheating encompasses not just the physical act of adultery, but also the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's a holistic perspective that considers both the external actions and the internal dispositions of an individual. As we can see, the Bible is quite explicit on the subject of marital betrayal. Cheating, in any form, is a serious violation of the marital covenant and a breach of trust that deeply wounds relationships and dishonors the sacred institution of marriage. The Old Testament provides numerous instances of adultery and its consequences. One of the most vivid examples lies in the story of King David and Bathsheba. Here, King David, captivated by Bathsheba's beauty, engages in an adulterous affair with her, despite her being married to Uriah, a loyal soldier in his army. The consequences of this act were severe. As the story unfolds, we see that David arranges for Uriah to be placed in the front line of a fierce battle, where he dies, a plot King David contrives to marry Bathsheba. However, God sees David's actions, and through the prophet Nathan, he reprimands David and prophesies that the sword shall never depart from his house. True to this prophecy, David's family is plagued by a series of tragedies. The child born from his affair with Bathsheba dies, his son Amnon rapes his half-sister Tamar, and another son Absalom leads a rebellion against him. This story, along with others, underlines the Old Testament's stern view of infidelity. The Ten Commandments, foundational to Jewish and Christian ethics, explicitly forbid adultery. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 14 it states, You shall not commit adultery. This commandment not only underscores the sanctity of marriage but also the importance of loyalty and trust. Moreover, the Old Testament law prescribes stoning as a punishment for adultery, emphasizing the gravity of such an act. In Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 22 to 24, it is written that if a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man and the woman must die. These examples illuminate the Old Testament's perspective on adultery. It is seen as a severe violation, an act of betrayal not just against a spouse but also against God's law and His divine plan for marriage. The Old Testament, thus, presents a stern view of infidelity. It warns of the dire consequences that follow, encouraging faithfulness within the sacred covenant of marriage. It is a timeless reminder that our actions carry weight and that faithfulness is not just a virtue but a commandment from God Himself. The New Testament, while affirming the Old Testament's stance, also offers a message of forgiveness. This part of the Bible brings to life the teachings of Jesus who, while not condoning adultery, emphasized the importance of mercy and repentance. One of the most poignant examples is found in the Gospel of John, where we are introduced to a woman caught in the act of adultery. 
the law of Moses dictated that such a woman should be stoned to death, yet Jesus, in his infinite wisdom and compassion, challenged those without sin to cast the first stone. In the face of this profound truth, the crowd dispersed, leaving only Jesus and the woman. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus said, go now and leave your life of sin. This story underscores a critical theme in Jesus' teachings, the power of forgiveness and the opportunity for redemption. Even in the face of grave sins like adultery, the New Testament opens a path for sinners to seek forgiveness and redeem themselves through repentance. Furthermore, Jesus expanded the definition of adultery to include not just physical acts but thoughts and desires as well. In the Gospel of Matthew, he teaches, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This teaching warns us that harboring impure thoughts can be just as damaging to our spiritual well-being as committing the act itself. However, it's essential to remember that forgiveness is not a free pass to continue in sinful ways. Repentance requires a sincere intention to turn away from sin and live a life that aligns with God's teachings. In summary, the New Testament doesn't shy away from the seriousness of adultery. It reaffirms the Old Testament's stance, but also emphasizes the power of forgiveness and repentance. It teaches us that while we are all prone to sin, we also have the capacity for redemption. The New Testament therefore offers a path of redemption for those who have strayed. What are the consequences of cheating according to the Bible? In the scriptures, we find a clear narrative of the dire consequences of infidelity. You see, when we delve into the Bible, we don't just find rules and regulations, we find stories. Stories that weave a tapestry of cause and effect, choices, and consequences. One of the most immediate consequences of cheating is the breaking of relationships. In Proverbs chapter 6 verses 32 and 33, it is written, He who commits adultery lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself. He will get wounds and dishonor, and his disgrace will not be wiped away. This speaks to the deep damage that infidelity can inflict not only on the person cheated upon but also on the one who commits the act. A second consequence is the loss of trust. Trust is a fragile thing, and once shattered it can be incredibly difficult to rebuild. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 5 it says, Everyone deceives his neighbor and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They weary themselves committing iniquity. This verse underscores the destructive power of lies and deceit, key elements of infidelity. And let's not forget the spiritual consequences of cheating. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9, the Apostle Paul warns that adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is a stark reminder that our actions on earth have spiritual repercussions that extend into eternity. Yet it's also important to remember that the Bible isn't just about consequences. It's about grace, forgiveness, and the possibility for redemption. But that's a topic for our next scene. The Bible warns of dire consequences, both earthly and spiritual for those who cheat. Remember, the choices we make today have a lasting impact on our lives and the lives of those around us. So let's make choices that honor our commitments, respect our loved ones, and reflect the love of God. But what about forgiveness? Can a cheater find redemption? In the Bible, forgiveness and repentance are two of the most significant concepts. While God detests sin, he also loves the sinner. He offers opportunities for repentance and forgiveness, even to those who transgress his laws, like those who commit adultery. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This verse is a clear testament to God's endless mercy and his willingness to forgive. Should we come to him in honesty and repentance? God's love is unconditional. It does not depend on our righteousness but rather on his nature as a loving father. His forgiveness is available to everyone, regardless of the sin committed. The key is repentance, a sincere turning away from sin and a commitment to follow his ways. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 we find the story of the prodigal son who squandered his inheritance in sinful living but was welcomed back by his father with open arms when he returned in repentance. This is a powerful depiction of God's love and forgiveness. But let's not forget repentance is not merely about saying sorry, it's a change of heart, a sincere desire to turn away from the sinful path and follow God's commands. It's about acknowledging our wrongdoings, feeling genuine remorse, and making a conscious decision to change our ways. And while God forgives, it is also important for us to forgive ourselves and seek forgiveness from those we have wronged. 
In the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 it says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. The Bible, while condemning adultery, also offers a message of hope and forgiveness. So, regardless of the past, there's always a chance for a new beginning with God. It's never too late to turn back, repent, and receive God's forgiveness. The Bible's teachings on cheating are clear and uncompromising. Throughout this video, we've explored the depths of those teachings, unearthing profound wisdom from both the Old and New Testaments. We've discovered that the Bible defines cheating as a severe violation of the marital bond, a transgression that's not taken lightly. We delved into the Old Testament, illuminating the stern prohibitions against adultery and the severe consequences that followed such actions. Transitioning into the New Testament, we found a continuation of this theme with Jesus himself reaffirming the sanctity of marriage and the gravity of cheating, but the Bible doesn't just condemn, it also offers a route towards redemption. We've learned that despite the gravity of cheating, there's a path to forgiveness through sincere repentance. A chance to make amends, to learn, and to grow. This journey through biblical teachings on cheating serves as a reminder of the sacredness of marriage, the importance of fidelity, and the beauty of forgiveness. It's a testament to the fact that while actions have consequences, there's always room for grace and redemption. If you found this video informative, please give us a thumbs up and share. Join us and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the little tree below our video then hit subscribe. Become a part of a growing family. May God bless you and all your endeavors. Thank you for watching.